Good morning, everybody. You are tuned to Computers 2K now on the Nissan Communication Network. I'm Amnon, your host for the next few hours, along with Spence. Good morning. It, it's 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 that time again? It is that time again. I've been sitting at my desk for six days waiting. Oh, it's okay. And Good Steve morning. is here. I mean, Jorvik is here. Good morning. Good morning. And I see Nick just showed up. Hey. Hey. All right. Why, why do you see, Amnon, this is the whole point. This is a great thing about an internet show. You don't have to tell them that I just showed up. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry. I, I, I can't. No, I can't see that. I, I, I'm not telling people. When I. Well, when, but, I don't know. I mean, you told them. Then I just told them. So well, no, them. no. The, the, let, me, let me put it this way. When I capture this screen, I make everything <laughs> really small. So oh, no, I, I understand. I, I got and, it. I get it. Yeah. You know. Nick was here since yesterday. Uh, yeah, th th see, yeah. that's what I would have appreciated. Our number is 919-518-9773. Computers 2K Voice on Skype. And today's show is being brought to you by Adamus.com, makers of quality video recorders and converters for professionals. And the broadcast is made possible by Telestream Wirecast software. And... That's it. Yeah. Um, if I if I if I sound kind of all happy, it's because of what happened Friday. So don't hold it against me. <laughs> but we started talking about about hardware, and Spence was saying that he had a first blue screen, first Windows Ten blue screen. And Ooh, I think I've only had a couple, maybe one or two in the in the lifetime. It's been about a year and a half, I think. But the uh, it did a, it actually did a dump, and the only what what it came back and said was that uh, trying to switch from uh, delayed procedure call. I have no idea what app did it. Don't know what happened, and to be honest, I don't care because it's just the the last. So not that I'm mad at the machine or anything like that, but the last straw making me want to go back and do a clean install because this was the Windows 10 upgrade machine. This was done from Windows 7 Pro, the very first one, very first time I used Windows 10, this machine. So I've never done anything but keep piling on more updates to the upgraded machine. So I'm going to go back and clean it up. Yeah, I um, it's funny you say that because I'm, I need to do a complete format of my machine as well. But it's just such a pain to do it. It is. That's the, it's been stopping me. But and but, specifically because of uh, Am Amnon can relate to this, especially because of infection and some of these other shows. We have lots of assets that need to be in specific locations, and you can't just move everything over. Uh, right. Pass change, locations change, hard drive names change, depending on how all that stuff works. So I just, I don't know when I'm ever going to find time to do it. That, that's why I'm not doing it. But because well, and the other part is this is my main computer too. It's not like I have a, a backup one to this is this is it. So it makes it kind of. It's always kinda. hard, and it's not to to reformat the drive and install operating system. It's not hard. Well, here's the thing with it's Windows 10, you don't have to part. do it. But you don't have to do that with Windows 10 anymore, which is really nice either. What do you mean? Um, it's got the refresh feature built right into it. Um, Explain. A, but in my case, I'd be refreshing an updated version. Which is no, what so I I, I, what I believe it does is it wipes all the data and re-downloads the OS from what I believe. There's two different versions of that wipe. There's one that deletes all your data. And the, and just makes it a clean operating system. Now there's one that deletes all your data and like up redoes the operating system as well. And that's what I need to do. Is there one that just? Because here's the thing, you know, I don't I mean I don't know about you, Spence, but I don't have a key for Windows 10, so I don't know how I could do a fresh install of Windows 10 on this computer. It will. You, it'll automatically recognize your hardware ID. Okay. okay. So that's the first thing I checked. I wanted to. Go, I knew that was a case, but I wanted to go back and confirm that that's what would happen. Gotcha. What pushed me over that had me thinking about this was the Acrobat issue I had after the last update. I do a lot of conversions from uh, PowerPoint and Word, and PowerPoint worked fine after this update, but Word, the document would come out 
one tenth of the size that it was in Word in in Acrobat. I said, I, and I went through. I found, I went to all the settings. I I did searches on this problem, and people were having this problem, but not related to an update from Windows 10. So I I didn't know what was wrong. So I said, well, am I going to reinstall Office, and then I'm going to reinstall Acrobat and find out it still doesn't work? I may as well just go ahead and start over. I'm going to put, use a new hard drive so I don't uh, wipe out my installation if it if it isn't uh, friendly. So what I, I I would like to know, and I'll ask again. So is there also Nick an option to wipe the operating system and install it also and leave the data in place? No, I don't think there's one of those. No. Um, well, I, I, I don't I don't necessarily I don't think you want that anyway. I mean, there's a, there's a certain satisfaction of having to reload your data, not um and get rid of the junk that you really don't need. Yeah, um, for me that's not too much stuff as far as programs but it is a lot through only the programs that i use but some people that have like for you if you have a whole lot of programs on it i do it's 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 a long process it is and and, and it's, it's a good painful. process too and and i i i very strongly uh rebuttal against imaging the computer and doing that for for a wipe um and and playing around with stuff like that you de definitely get rid of everything and start from scratch because yeah. you'll, you'll realize is... that that piece of software that oh i don't need to install that i might need that you won't end up reinstalling and you'll save yourself a lot of space and a and and hopefully some some speed computer wise too with getting rid of all that uh all those programs and data clutter yeah exactly and that's what it is i look at my program files and i'm like eh, i may use this program when i know damn well i'm not going to use that mm -hmm. Actually, when I built the new machine, the way that I did it is I knew what I'm what I am going to use for sure. And there were a lot of other ones that I could have used. And I said, no, I'll install them as I need them. And that, and you add another program when you need it. And you find out that <laughs> half of those you don't use anymore. Oh, and that's that, good. I'm not, that, that reminds me of a, a very good point to make here that you should run Bell Arc Advisor. And, and print it out you do or it. save it somewhere. Yeah. It's an excellent program. will give you a snapshot of the machine, give you, if it can find license keys, it will. Um, but just to give you an idea of what you have on there. And then you can go through that list and say, I don't need that. I don't need that. I need this. And it gives you a, essentially a worksheet to recover from, to rebuild the machine to where you want it to be. Sorry to interrupt, but I wanted to make sure I got that out there. No interruption. It's fine. Okay. I'll, I'll um, so anyway, what, what happened with me uh, happened yesterday, and then it happened a few weeks ago. I came in the studio, and the, the screen was on that first screen that comes up when you turn, when it identifies what motherboard it is and all that. And at the bottom, it had a uh, message that said, uh, power supply surge detected. And the machine was shut down to prevent something from happening. I can't remember. So you start it, and it comes right back. So apparently, they do shut it down somehow gracefully. I don't know. But that's the second time. It's it probably happens. not graceful, but it's sure it's probably better than frying your motherboard. May, yeah. Uh, the, the the thing is, nothing was corrupted. It came to Windows right away. Yeah. Um, so I went and I read about it because I said, okay, this time it's something. Last time it happened, I remember I was playing a lot with profiles. And, and the, it's when I put the, the Vixia camera and I in and out, in and out, in and out. And one of the times when I clicked on it, it just went and did the same thing. So I went to the RAID, and I have a, an ASUS motherboard. Uh, and the first one that I, I ran across said, read this. Uh, uh, apparently, a lot of people have that problem. And say, read this from ASUS. They recommend turn it off, that feature. So I went, and I read. And sure enough, they say, yeah, to do away with it because it is 
something that was in one of the earlier bios and they did away with it later or something. Uh, bottom line was do away with it. Some people put some comments about it and saying that uh, no other motherboard has this and they don't understand why Asus had to do it. It must have been a good salesman that sold them on adding this feature. Um, and a lot of people were saying that it is it, it, 99% false detection. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll turn it off. So I went and found it and disabled it. Somebody was saying that when they clicked on load defaults in the BIOS, it actually was off. So maybe I turned it on when I set up that machine. But I was not about to load defaults in the BIOS because a lot of changes were made. Um, but this is not the end of the story. So then I said, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to order me another power supply. So I'll have a spare one anyway, because if that was the case and they said change the power supply, I wouldn't have one. I didn't have one 600 or whatever you guys told me to get back then. So I went and I ordered another one. We'll be here tomorrow. And then I said, well, maybe it's something, maybe it has something to do with the UPS. So I... I moved the UPS, and this UPS is not new. It's probably 10, 15 years old. It's a 1.4 1, 1. Uh, okay, what is it? K, uh, 1.4 1. what they call it? Uh, what this? VA? KVA. Uh, Spence, you're, okay, you're, you're muted, but that's okay. Um, and I moved it, and I heard a click from inside. So I went ahead, and I turned off the machine and went to look. And the battery connector on the back, I, this, this is a UPS that has a, the UPS itself, and it has another box that actually stacks normally with the four big batteries that you plug in the back. It's sitting on the floor. So I moved it, and I, sure enough. So I have another one, a backup one, a backup to the backup. And I put that on and plugged it in, and it started. And I heard some clicking from it. So I said, okay, test. So it started testing, and you see the lights shining, and it went, went pow! And I guess something inside blew. I said, pow? Okay. Can, you say, can you say that again? Pow? It went, pow! I mean, oh, okay. a lot louder, though. So oh, I, That's bad, then. Yeah. yeah. If, yeah it, so, if it did that, that's pretty bad. Yeah. So I, I moved it aside. I bought, I bought both of them some time ago, and they were both for 100 bucks, And oh, it lasted for go. a long time. Yeah. So I said, okay, I'm not putting the other one in because I don't trust it. So I went and I got one of the newer, the backup for that I have uh, for, for Delta Force, which is the rack-mounted APC. And I stood it there, and I plugged it in, and everything is fine. And so far, everything is okay. Um, it's a good thing that it happened yesterday, but... It was it was very interesting the progression of how how it went, uh, like everything all at once. But uh, it, it's a good thing it didn't happen during your show. Now, if there is a problem with this power supply, we may go, I may go, blank, suddenly, because that's what happened. I mean the the motherboard shuts everything down. Um, the, well, the, it, won't, it won't just be you going blank. We'll all go blank. Yeah, but the chat will still work. Yes, but yeah. Now, so when just, they, just so you know, did they say did Samsung? Oh, who was the power supply it's manufacturer? Asus. Asu, oh, the power supply is. Oh I, no, that doesn't matter. But maybe Asus. Asus posted the message. Did it say please ignore any smells? <laughs> that you're okay. <laughs> Some people say that changing the the motherboard, the power supply, fixed the problem. 
But again, it can happen after a few months. So you don't know that that's what it is. I mean, I would, if this would happen every 10 minutes, you know, okay, yeah, well, there's a problem. Um, but I, I, I don't see how it could, it could do it. Oh, and, oh, I know. Uh, wait a second. The reason I pulled the first one out is I said, you know what? I'm going to put the power conditioner between the UPS and the wall. And I have one of those big 2K uh, power conditioners. When I plugged it into the power supply, it just went... <laughs> It didn't like it. Now, we, all it is, been, it's a transformer. Andrew was asking how you had that, how you would spell that first word. Now, how do you spell that one? <laughs> that. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> uh, but it, it, it's, uh, that's why I took it out, the first one, because I said, no, that should not happen. So. It's it, if this would if this was a problem that I thought is going to happen again, I I, I would have announced that there's no show. But I turned it on, came this morning, everything was fine. And the fact that people say turn it off, I mean, yes, every now and then I see the a power sag when they do so or flicker. When they do something outside, they, you know, uh, like I always say, we live in the third world country here. Or it seems like it with power interruptions galore. I, I don't know if the, power, if the UPS could not handle that or if it didn't have a good... Some, something, something was definitely wrong unless the power supply is really bad. And I'll have another one. So th this was an interesting. I mean, this morning I came in here and I kind of, I kind of looked carefully around the corner to see the the uh, monitor, and if it looking, was looking if, for scorch marks on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, and that's the nice thing about those old UPSs. The case, it's not metal; it's plastic, but it's it's really heavy. Pli I mean, the box by itself is heavy. Um, just that now I have four big batteries that I just replaced. I don't know when, I mean, maybe a year ago, that are good and expensive. Uh, uh, but, you know, we'll find use for them. I noticed that the new uh, battery backup that I got, yeah, it's a 450. 450 or 650, I can't remember. It's so light. The battery technology is changing again to the point where the batteries are much lighter. I hope that doesn't mean much cheaper yeah. in quality. Steve, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hope everyone's well. So far. Splendid. Sorry I'm late. I got uh, chatting with an old friend I haven't spoken with for a while. Unacceptable. Well, I'm just that's terrible. your pay, obviously. Yes, I, I fully, fully appreciate that's going to happen. Yeah. As you should, as you should. <laughs> Steve so, was late because his power supply posted an error saying <laughs> over over surge protection. That's what we've been talking about Amnon's issue this morning. So, so uh, I have a I've had an Asus motherboard for about two years in this computer, yeah. um, and and I've I, and I've actually so I don't even want to say it. Say it myself in the foot. Um, I've never had any issues with my motherboard. Make sure. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I've never seen that error before. I would, I would, I would, I would put some money on the fact it's probably just the faulty power supply. Well, I mean, when I get the new power supply, I, I'm, I'm going to replace it and keep the other yeah. one as a backup. And, and that's, you know, and, uh, and it's funny how you said you read online that a lot of people were upset about that, that, that feature. I mean, I, sounds like a, a perfect feature to me in in case of of oversurge from the power supply this thing is able to to halt itself without 
you know, maybe it only fries the motherboard itself. It doesn't fry the RAM. It doesn't fry anything attached to it. That's um, that, that's well, that pretty was useful. A, yeah, but that's ASUS was ASUS advice was to turn it off. No, but you were saying online how people said they yeah. want people they were upset that ASUS was the only one that had this. Oh. Yeah, then it, well, it's not upset. Is it said? Well, I don't I like people. I don't saying, understand. I don't understand I mean, why they sense. even have this if they it tell makes you perfect to turn sense. It off. If, you, if you have a faulty motherboard uh, or a faulty power supply, it ends up frying your motherboard and everything attached to it. You're it, out eleven hundred dollars worth of equipment. Yeah. So I mean, it it, it it's uh, th there's got to be something. It, it's probably. Go ahead. It's most likely not a false positive. So. Hopefully that's I, all it is. I hope so. But in, but in all the years that I've repaired PCs, I have never had an issue with a power supply not be fixed by replacing it. If the machine wouldn't start yep. or it would shut itself off, it, I never had to go back and replace other components because the power supply failed. The power, power supply has enough internal protections built in that if it tries to start up and it doesn't have the correct voltage or something's wrong, it won't start. So uh, the good news was that in every case I've ever, ever had to replace one, I didn't have to replace any other components. Power right. supply explode. I've had one go bad. Yeah, a cap um, can, but can I've go never had one. bam inside. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I've, I've never. And I had one explode on a, on a other piece of office equipment. You turn it on, the capacitors exploded. Yeah. What a, yeah. Steve. I just turned the machine, machine off like I normally do in the evening, and it was fine. I turned it on the following morning, and it just went bang, and there was a great big flash of light from the back of it. Wow. Electronic and did it, pulse. Yeah, that's the power supply. <laughs> did, it damage any, did it damage any equipment? No. Uh, I took a, a power supply out of another machine and, and put it in. Luckily, everything was working fine. But I have heard cases where it has fried the, the processor and, and the RAM or other components. Luckily this... for me, it didn't. This used to happen years ago. I have not seen that lately. In the last 10 years, I have not seen that. I remember this happening with the early, early 486s and early Pentiums. Um, but not, not lately that it will burn. I mean, it, the RAM will get destroyed. Processors will get destroyed. I, I don't know what. I don't know if it's a technology that now is uh, is better that saves it. I don't know. But this I definitely never came across. But anyway, talking about operating systems and uh, refreshing them. In a blog post, Microsoft says that continued usage of Windows 7 increases maintenance and operating costs for businesses. Furthermore, Time is needlessly wasted on combating malware attacks that could have been avoided by upgrading to Windows 10. And, and a side note, in the last uh, three, four months, I have not seen one Windows 7 machine here with malware. I've seen quite a few of them with Windows 10. And I don't understand how it, they get in because I thought that it's pretty well protected. A report of, on NeoWin, NeoWin adds that Microsoft also says that many hardware manufacturers do not provide drivers for Windows 7 any longer. And maybe the many developers and companies refrain from releasing programs on the outdated operating system. Head of Windows at Microsoft in Germany said that he had the following... It said the following on Windows 7. Today, it does not meet the requirements of modern technology, nor the high security requirements of IT departments. As early as in Windows XP, we saw that companies should take early steps to avoid future risks or costs. With Windows 10, we offer our customers the highest level of security and functionality at the cutting edge. Um, th this can be said, could have been said every time when a new operating system came out. The newer one is better and it's more secure and it's. Uh, but 
I mean, Windows 7 is still a current operating system, and they call it outdated already. They're really trying well, is, to get I mean, us. It's two generations old when you think of it. Actually, it's three well, generations. <laughs> but it's still it's still supported. That's my point. It is. And they call I, mean, it, you can, I guess you yeah. can say it's old. I mean, they can they can turn around and say, okay, you know what? We're not going to support it anymore. They can do they it. But they will be shooting themselves. Yes. Because that is the corporate standard still. Right. Yep. People avoided Windows 8, and Windows 10 still has not proved itself from a well, I wouldn't say proved itself. I would say it had not had the acceptance or adoption rate in the corporate world that would make it make Windows 7 go away. But I think so many people or so many companies were using XP and stuck with that and it, it didn't bother with Vista at all. The ones that, that did manage to uh, upgrade to Windows 7 and, and stick with that, they don't want to go through all that process again to 10 because it's they only just come on to 7. And that, it, it seven strange. is still. I mean, seven was probably. I remember when Steve Gibson went after seven when it first came out because of security breaches. Seven is probably one of the most patched uh, operating systems out there because of the. They got. They finally got rid of all the old hooks into all the all the uh, backward compatible um, tools that they put into that operating system so that it would work going back were finally removed. That was the good part about Windows 7. Yup. Let's see what else is here. Um, if you if you uh, if you have AT&T, Uverse or whatever, a number of consumers report they are unable to get a refund for the subscription to AT&T's recent launched streaming service, DirecTV Now. Something they've requested after being unhappy with the new service performance. TechCrunch is reporting that according to several postings on AT&T's official forum, customers found the only way to get help was through a hard to find chat feature. And when they asked the AT&T reps about refunds, the customers were told they were not offered. Writes one user with a, it says, after attempting to get a refund via chat, the rep, the rep told them specifically, we do not currently have a policy in place to offer any refunds. Um, you may not have a policy, at and but if a, what, what you are standing to do here is lose customers because of that. What, this is what service? DirecTV Now? DirecTV Now. This thing's been out for like a month. How could you be looking for a refund already? Well, I mean, if people are not happy with it, that's exactly. It's oh, the Lord. beginning, so there's no... You know, you, you, you subscribe to something, and it's not doing what, what you do. I mean, if, if they're still testing it, give it for free. Don't charge for it. Well, they're, they're not testing it. I, I don't know. It, it, it's, uh, it, it's just something that I, I can see how that can happen when you, when you try to use a new service, and it's not up to par. So Trump had to give in, give up his uh, Android phone, huh? No. They apparently, when, when you become president, well, he tweeted five minutes ago from Android. Yeah. So I'd say. Well, I, I don't know if they may have given him another Android, but they were saying minutes that ago. I, that's what I heard that he they gave him a new secure Android. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. so it is an Android. Okay. Yes. Well, Twitter from Android. Android well, Twelve minutes ago. They gave him a new phone. What it is was, it? I don't know. Is it from the real Donald or yep. from Post? That's from the real Donald Trump account. Yeah. Good. Because they say, who got two thumbs in a Secret Service approved phone to tweet from? On arriving in Washington Thursday ahead of his inauguration, Donald Trump has handed in his Android device 
in exchange for an identified lockdown phone. According to the Associated Press, from they said their phone comes with a new number that is known only to a limited number of people. This marks a big change for Trump, who's frequently on the, on the line with friends, business contacts, reporters, foreign leaders, and politicians. Obama was the first president to use a mobile device approved by security agencies because of hacking concerns. Initially, he had heavily modified BlackBerry and later switched to another phone that had most features totally disabled. It was not known to use it for making or receiving calls, but it was one of the few devices that had access to the at POTUS Twitter account. So uh, I, I don't think anybody is going to stop Donald Trump from tweeting. Uh, that's that's how he got there, and I think he should still he's, he con- he should continue doing it. And and we can uh, we can talk about it a little bit. I, I've got people here asking, well, well, why? I mean, it's crazy. Why why is he doing all this? I said, you know what? I'd rather see somebody who who, who talks about what he thinks and tells you than somebody who thinks one thing and tells you another. And it's it's all about keeping people off balance. It doesn't matter what it is, but it's it's that's him. And you know that that's him, and that's fine. He, it may come to, to bite him in the ass one of these days, but so far, it's fine. Well, even if it does come to bite him, it... It, it won't matter because <laughs> he'll just keep going. Yeah, that's well, just the yep. way. And that's there what frustrates so many people about him. It's just like, you just made this mistake. And he's like, moving on. Yeah, exactly. Move, moving on is the point. Good or bad. I mean, that's just. Uh... That's the way it is. Like that that uh, poster. Who who posted it in the in the hangout, Nick? The, huh? the, the, there was that poster that had says, "Do you remember these?" And there was a banner that said, "He won, get over it." And that I was. Know, it's not really technology stuff. I don't know. I know, but I mean, it's it's interesting about Obama. Yeah. It's I because I still it it's it's affecting everything. But it's going to be better. Yeah. All right, come on, guys. Uh, I don't. I don't want to just read stuff. Uh, but here, Windows 10. You want Windows 10? Well, Google Chrome users on Windows 10 are apparently yeah, sure. being treated to a new experience. A pop-up yep. ad, huh? I know. I'm saying I saw it. Oh, you want to talk about it? No, I'm just saying I saw oh. the story. Yeah, uh, a pop-up ad. If you have Chrome installed and the icon present on the Windows taskbar, chances are you're going to start seeing a (coughs) pop-up advertisement appear suggesting you install Microsoft Personal Shopping Assistant Chrome extension. Microsoft is saying your smart shopping cart across the web. Opting to install the extension results in Microsoft monitoring which products you are searched, you have, you've searched for and viewed while using Chrome, and then offering to compare those products to find the best price. There's also alerts when price change, and the ability to track products across all your devices. Of course, Microsoft will make money if you opt to purchase any products using their system. So in a way, Microsoft is putting a an Amazon icon on your desktop that every time you go to buy anything, you go through it and they get money from it. They need it, don't they? Well, it, they did give the operating system away for free. Yeah, sure. I'd be a little bit upset if I had to pay for Windows 10 on a new computer and that showed up. I wouldn't like that very much. <laughs> But I mean, there, there's at least you have to opt 
in. So I guess that means that if you don't, nothing is going to happen, which is which is good. Is very good. Nine one nine five one eight nine seven seven three. Computers to a voice on Skype. And again, AT and T users. For the second time in nine months, AT and T is raising its activation and upgrade fee. In April, the fee for non-contract customers was raised from fifteen to twenty. Today, it has been raised another five bucks from twenty to twenty-five. Ars Technica reports. That as the mobile carrier switched from contract to device payment plans, AT&T initially did not charge an activation and upgrade fee for customers who brought their own phone or bought one from AT&T on an installment plan. But in July 2015, AT&T started charging a $15 activation. So... I don't understand what, I mean, yeah, when you have millions of customers, $5 is a lot. But are I they remember, hurting? Does it say how much it is now, or did it say just raised it by $5? It's, now it's 25 It used to be 15 It used to be 15 then in April it went to 20 and now it went up to 25 The $25 fee is charged for new activations or upgrades. When customer purchase devices on installment agreement. And those that come in with their own phone are charged a $25 fee when they activate a new line of service, but not when they upgrade phone phones on an existing line. We're making a minor adjustment <coughs> to our activation and upgrade fee. Yeah. The change the change in effect today, AT&T told ours, they will also charge the $45 activation and upgrade fees on two-year contracts. But those contracts are available only on select devices. 45 bucks. I don't know. Uh, I, I, re I, I don't know. It seems it seems ridiculous that they are just upping and upping on on that. I mean, I can under, I can see charging more for certain services, but for activation, I mean, you are new activation. You are stopping people from coming to you. Yeah, they've always charged that. It used to be fifteen, twenty five is a little outrageous, especially especially when you're going to be spending $35 a month with their yeah. uh, their BS payment plans to to pay off your $1100 smartphone. Uh, they do waive it though in some instances and I do remember that. Uh, they um have, they have a policy in place. <laughs> now, I just it's like it, it, when, when if you were to move over probably three cell phones and we're like, hey, well, what's up with this activation fee? I'm sure they'd waive it. I remember they waived one of our activation fees for some reason. Well, you know, it's it's a, it's a flexible it, because it doesn't really cost them to do anything. It's a flexible charge, right? Right. It doesn't cost them. Absolutely. Exactly. It, so it, it's a flexible charge. Well, nothing flexible for somebody who's on a fixed income. Somebody and and a lot of people like AT and T. A lot of people are, I well, mean, older people. I'm, AT and T I'm of means the mindset. something. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I, I don't know. For some reason, I'm having an issue hearing you. It's, it's on my end, I think. Um, you said for, uh, you are you're on a fixed income. What? Yeah. You know, you said you're of a mindset that. Yeah, I'm a mindset. If you're on a fixed income or whatever, you need to be going with one of the straight talk or uh, cricket or one of those other providers because. AT&T, Verizon, and, and Sprint will, will rake you over the coals with, with their fees and stuff. Right. I but, really, yeah. But that's the problem, that a lot of the older people are used to AT&T, and AT&T means something. And a well, lot that's of, account activation, I'm not. So if you're already an AT&T customer, you're never paying this fee again. Right. No, I understand. But that's so. stopping them from... It's, well, if they it's, like AT&T, they already have it. If they don't have it, then I wouldn't <laughs> recommend it. 
Ja. <clears throat> yeah. So did you happen to <clears throat> see the update about um, Google with the Alphabet companies? Uh, I mean, it's been talking about it for a while, about cutting back on their projects, but they uh, are actually going to abandon some of them, not uh, just cut back. They're, they're doing away with Google Plus? I read something yep. somewhere. Well, they're doing, yeah, they're, they're, that's not where they, not taking them where they want to go. Uh, the car development is scaled back. If not, I mean, it, it may be poised to get rid of it. But the uh, Google Fiber is apparently being dropped from certain areas, not just delayed. So I, I tried to drill down into the story locally to find out what that means. Um, but what, where they've already made the investment in infrastructure, they're going to bring it out. But if there are some of the pro some of the sections that they're they're looking at doing in the triangle area, may actually be dropped. Yeah, I had a feeling that Google Fiber thing wasn't going to last. They were very secretive about it and not very for, uh, for forthcoming with information. It, I mean, it makes sense. I think that they probably didn't anticipate the cost. Oh, of course. And now that they're sharpening their pencil a little bit and realizing that, hey, you know, we're not just flush with money that we can do whatever the hell we want and not make any and, and still lose money on these projects. Eventually, <laughs> that's got to catch up with you. So, yeah. <clears throat> well, and, and and you're spot on with that, Spence. I mean, you look at, at half the things that Google's name is associated with and they, they're not making money on any of these services. No. They're just blow. I can't imagine how much money. There's no way they're making a profit every month. They can't be. <clears throat> they have so many like BS services that are just eating away bandwidth and data, and and they're just not profiting off of. I can't imagine. I mean, even Google Plus. For look at that. I mean, there there's no way they're making money off Google Plus anymore. They've got millions of registered accounts, and nobody uses it. Did they ever? I'm sure at some point they, there was there was some th th they were there there must have been a way to make money with it at some point with ads or something like that but I don't but nobody uses it anymore. Hmm. Well, it's it's uh, they they are they, they've got they're making a lot of money from somewhere uh, because they have it. Uh, but oh, now, yeah. now they're into the phones and they're talking about electric cars and uh, you know well that phone thing that phone thing is going to be interesting too um to see what that what if that ever evolves because all that is right now is just a remake of uh or just you know reselling sprints network yeah but <clears throat> they're uh, what is it that they have the pixel and now oh, you mean that? I'm, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I was talking about like their cell phone coverage. What's it called? Oh. Um, what's that Google service, I, phone service called? I don't know. Do they actually have it? Yeah, they do. Uh, it is called Project Fi. And like that, there you go, Spence. That's a perfect example of another big BS service that I'm sure they invested yep. all this money into and nobody even knows what the hell it is. I mean, it's okay to do that. As long as you can keep funding it, yeah. And but there, I'm looking at the um, 2016. I'm not sure when their fiscal year ends, but looking at looking at their income statement. And uh, for 2013, they made their gross profit was 33 million. Million? Uh, million. That's it. Gross profit. Total revenue. Oh, I don't know. That's just. I'm sure. I don't know what division this is. No, this is Alphabet Inc. This is not the main company. This gotcha. is the. This is the uh, um, Skunk Works, basically. Um, so they they're apparently still making money. I mean, the, the gross profit this for 2015 was 46 million dollars on this division that has all these loss leaders. So. Yeah, I'm, I mean, they're Google. They're making money. But eventually, like you said, this stuff is – there's no way it's cost-effective for them to roll out this fiber and then charge you uh, $56 a month for gigabit internet or whatever. Uh, you know, the, there's some crazy low price that it is. Um, it just can't be cost-effective. Yeah, I mean, I think it's – I think they were talking about 70-some. Yeah, but, I mean, even 70-something. Time Warner charges uh, – 
more. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Time Warner is, um, I don't know. I think my plan is like 80 something, 90 something dollars a month. So, yeah, but crap. But, but look, think about the speed. Yeah, now, well, exactly, I don't know. Well, exa- but it's not even the speed as much as it's the infrastructure that they're, ha- you know, Time Warner's paid for for that for right. that coax they laid in this this subdivision time and time and time again the, um, the last that i read about google fiber is they're not going to run fiber anymore to the ha- to the home they're going to go wirelessly from central places you know it's like like a cell phone and now you've got your yes that's good for um connectivity but now you've lost the so-called speed advantage because you just yeah the technology is there sort of to get that kind of speed over wireless but as soon as you get wide adoption you'll be flooded you won't have the um the throughput yeah i mean look even with the with the at t gigabit mike said many times i mean the speed is not what no. uh, what he was told? No, what they it were changes. Promised. It fluctuates as as usage and marketing and reality. I used to used to say, don't confuse marketing with with uh, with sales. Yeah. So you uh, go into. I I Maybe saw I saw a slowdown, big slowdown, Friday, during the inauguration. I was doing a show, sitting here doing a show and I was watching the thing on my, on the laptop here and the thing kept on ref, uh, buffering and I went to do a, a speed test and instead of getting almost 300 down it was in the 90s and 80s so I'm sure that wasn't connected the what I'm sure that wasn't. I'm sure there was a different issue. I don't think it had anything to do I don't with the know. inauguration. In the evening, everything kind of bad went back to normal. But uh, yeah, if you get flooded, and a lot of people are using it, then yeah. Well, just just the last mile part of this, the wireless part of it, would be suspect because it is not. You're still on a shared media. It's not like you have your own wireless channel that's dedicated just to you you have to share it's it's a a shared domain so i just ran just for fun i just ran uh speed test beta the, the html3 speed test mm-hmm. i'm getting 350 down that's more than people are getting with gigabit fiber from at and yeah yeah it, it, some it, it, it's some yeah absolutely so and you i was and surprised you, and, and right. you are in the middle of, of streaming up and down. Yes. Um, but I, I worked, I've been working, uh, actually been very, very happy to be getting a lot of um, IT work at the beginning of the year. That's great. I love this stuff. I just wish it would keep coming. But the <laughs> I worked at a office where I was helping people migrate to new, new, uh, to new platforms from older, Older PCs moved to Windows 10. All new, uh, upgrade all the apps they were using. They had a, um, their, they get their application support from a actual what's a remote desktop. They connect to another a remote desktop that gives them all the uh, uh, accounting applications that they need. It's kind of it was really fascinating, very well done. But the point was that they had Dropbox and they were trying to move all of their files from their existing Dropbox on their older PCs up to the new PCs. So that meant you have to upload them to the cloud and then download them back again to the uh, PCs. Well, they were looking for this one particular file, PST file, which was about four gig, started the, started the upload to, cloud, uh, to Dropbox and the whole network just went, it, it was almost, almost unusable. Turns out that their service from Time Warner was business class, and it was 10 down, one up. Yeah, business class was always slow. 
slow work. That's um, like, and they're paying double what yeah. I pay for this service that I have. I have three fifty down and twenty two up. Yep. And they're paying double. And I'm I, thinking um, this is. And they don't offer the actual service that you would get if you re-upped with them. If you uh, you would get twice that speed for the same price if you went in and renegotiated. So it's like, why don't they call you and tell you? No. Um, I was I know, able it's a rhetorical to, question. Uh, <laughs> right. I was, I was able to push my boss over to Fios uh, probably about a year ago now, and, and he had that same plan with Time Warner. It was less than, it was like 700K up or something like that that we were that we were getting and, and now he's got fios with 50 by 50 symmetrical yeah that would and, and it would be amazing yeah it's uh it's it, it's crazy that how terrible their business class they are and and i love they, they they're always airing these commercials too time Warner cable business class or spectrum business class or high speed internet for your business i mean are you kidding me super reliability yeah what yeah, no, great. It's got 99% uptime reliability, but you're getting 800K, so it's irrelevant if it's up or down. Yep. I always, th I, I was under the impression until I dealt with a couple of customers recently that business class meant symmetrical service. I thought that's what it meant. I thought that's why it was more expensive, and it turns out it isn't. That's it for that, that. It's, it's so that they can send some guy in a truck yeah. to your to your business right away instead of supposedly. Waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that. That will fix itself. But let me tell you, every, everybody, everybody should uh, call their provider and renegotiate because they are, they, they do negotiate with you. If you don't say anything, it'll inch up and up and up and up. Yeah. But if you negotiate, especially if you have in your area, I mean, if you don't have competition in your area, then you're stuck. But most areas these days do have at least AT and T and Time Warner or AT and two two different providers. And I mean, I've seen that with Time Warner, and I've seen that with AT and T. the The pain is to have to call them once a year. And do it. Because when that year is over, it always goes up. And the last time we talked about it, last time I called AT&T and I said, you know what, forget it. I'm, I'm using you as a backup. I don't need to pay 90 bucks a month. I mean, the $70 was fine. And they sent me to their retention or whoever, and we talked. And the girl came back and she said, okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. It's going to be $70, and it's going to be like that. You don't have to call back. It's just going to stay at 70 I said, 70 bottom line. I don't want to see 70 plus fees. She said, no, it's going to be $70 a month. And sure enough, for the last two months, it's been $70. Now, we'll see when the, the year rolls over. But she said, I'm, I'm putting it here that it's going to stay like that. Now, if they think if they think that I'm just going to keep on paying seventy bucks every month every month forever, they're wrong because at a certain time when something changes in the market, I will call and I said, you know what, guys, I'm paying seventy. That's a little bit too much now. Um, I don't need you anymore. And they will do anything they can in order to keep you. Now, well, yeah, to an extent. I mean, to an extent, gonna, of course. If I offer them thirty, but yeah, no, that's not going to fly. You won't pay probably sixty. They probably won't even let you do sixty. It, um, I, I never, I never really told them I want to pay that much. I always left it up to them. It's always better. Let yeah. them. I'm, I'm sorry that I mentioned seventy dollars because maybe if I didn't say seventy dollars, it would have been less. But I'm okay with seventy. Next time, it's going to be just forget it. I mean, you know, well, what do you want? I said, no, you tell me what you can do. How, how, how low can you go in order to keep me as your customer? And we'll see. So, so yeah, do that because it, it, it pays off. It pays off. Don't just sit there. It's just like homeowner's insurance. If you sit there for 10, 15, 20 years with the same insurance company, You'll be surprised how much money you can save if you switch. 
to any other company. So to, to, to go back to the Android, so Android One, they have the Android, and, Android One platform. It's a program designed by Google to provide budget-friendly Android smartphones to developing markets. The phones are attractive because they contain no bloatware, competing services, and a lack of software and security updates. The stuff that most low-end smartphones contain. According to a report from the information, the program is about to make its way to the U.S. market. And The Verge reports that Android One phones have historically been produced by companies that you probably haven't heard of, like Micromax, Cherry, Q-Mobile. And originally, Google had the, a direct hand in detailing what components would go into the phone, but apparently became more flexible over time and eventually expanded the program beyond India to parts of Africa, Spain, and Portugal. Android One may not have been the rousing worldwide success that Google was hoping for, but it's still an important initiative for the company, especially at the low end. So, you know, to get a phone for 30 bucks, I mean, you buy them. It's, it's, it's nice. People can do that. But then don't go to AT&T because you'll have to pay another $45. Uh, I, I always, I mean, uh, yeah, Nick, I was going to ask you actually, I, all, I, I don't buy new phones. So yeah, what's up? what about, what about Galaxy S5? What does that, what you, you, it? you went with the Galaxies, right? I had a, no, I had a Galaxy Note. Oops, your video, your audio. Fix it. I had a Galaxy Note. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So not not the not the. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, you just got to be careful with. Um... I mean, I've got the S three now, and and I'm happy yeah, with I mean, it. I mean, it's working. But uh, I was just thinking, you know, if I want to, if it goes, uh, you can get an S five. Well, I, I think you should get. I don't think you should wait for it to go. I think that's the wrong mentality. Huh. Um. Because it won't ever go. But uh, well, if it gets to the point, what I'm saying, go. If it gets to the point where it's unusable, yeah, like I, would, I, like I, I did. If with... you can get an S5 at a good price, I think that's a very good phone. Even in an S6, you might be able to get it at a decent price. Yeah, they are below a hundred bucks. They're used. Yeah, they are used. Yeah. But a lot of dealers like uh, repurp, not repurpose, but they they resell them. And uh, I was looking, but I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know about all these operating systems. And it should have this Android or that Android. Uh, or this. You're not a power user, but no, not uh, by if any you can, If you can get a, uh, you can get a phone at a decent price. I definitely, definitely recommend it. I remember when the uh, the Droid was on its last legs. We got the S3, and back then, I think. It Two three years, it was one hundred twenty nine each, and I think yeah. it was I think it was uh, Steve, I mean Paul Underwood here that told told us about it and spoke about it and. Yeah, it's I think it's sometimes it's nice though to have a, a more updated phone because you, you I think you get more use out of it if it was more updated. I don't know. I mean, I'm hardly using it because I'm most of the time I'm here. I, I True, but I think out. You don't think part of that reason is because it's an older phone and it really won't do a whole lot? No, because, I mean, I don't even take it in my hand. I mean, it's sitting on the charger yeah. for days at a time. And then if I have to go out to do something, I take it. And, and then it's it's a phone. Well, yeah. Yesterday I went, uh, I was looking for a power supply for, uh, for a camera. And there was, I'm looking through the box and there is a flip phone. You know, <laughs> I'll just use that. Problem solved. <laughs> yep. <laughs> use that. Who cares? So anyway, but 
somebody's calling on my business line. I hope that's not no, not, not not somebody in here. Uh, our number here is 919-518-9773. Computers, <coughs> uh, computers what? 2K what? voice on Skype. <laughs> There's 2 Cray. Yeah, 2 Cray. Hey, QE. Um, it's, it's after 10. Uh, Spence, you want to do the specials? Why, sure. Let's see. We can do them right up. Let's see if I can, uh, have some, some bit of coordination here. That's not going to work too good because I don't have my backdrop set up right. <coughs> oh, well, we'll stick with this. I'm going to try to build my own teleprompter one of these days. Oh, there you go. I know you can do it pretty easily with a laptop and a, and a mirror and a few things. You, you got an old Android phone there, Spence? It's even easier with those things. Nah, my daughter has one. I might be able to borrow. That's, that's, a, that's a good idea. It's but, super easy, yeah. Yeah. So, well, maybe I should just put a still picture of myself up here. Then I don't have to be looking off the side of the screen. Not that I'm not that anybody um, cares to look at me, so um um that's gonna, not true, Spence. No, well, no. I'm gonna do something here. Let's see. Um just pull this Anna, you should just pull the uh spreadsheet over and just scroll through while he's talking. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm doing here on another window. There you go. Are you gonna put it up on the screen? Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, see I'm gonna bring it up and then we'll make it Give it a shot. Bigger and bigger. Okay, how's this? There we go. There we there go. There you go. All right, go oh. on, Spencer. Oh, there we go. Yeah, all right. There we go. Okay. But I'm not going to look at that screen because it'll be lag behind. It'll get really weird. Yeah, it's going to be lagging. Yeah. Okay, so Confused Chicken Now specials for January 22nd, 2017. We have a used Android phone from Washington D.C. on sale. Um, only been only been gently used for Twitter. You don't get my joke. Only been used for Twitter. I get it, and it hasn't uh, been light. I, Spence, I wouldn't even say it's been lightly used. It's been very used. Very <laughs> used. Yeah, the keys are actually worn off. Yes, the screen. No, what keys? It's a touch screen. All right, Idea Pad. This is from Lenovo Intel Core i7 12. 12 gig of memory, one terabyte hard drive, 37% off. It's $499, normally $799. So here's your chance. HP Pavilion, Intel Core i5 desktop computer, 31% off. It's $599. Uh, Dell uh, N3700. Now, this is an entry-level machine, but a very good one. This is that quad-core Pentium, the new, new processor. It's been out a little over a year. Um, finding it a lot of... Uh, of uh, cheaper machines, but uh, a good performer. Uh, Dell 15.6 inch laptop for 249, normally 399, 37% off. Dell 21 inch, 21.5 inch LED monitor for 99 bucks. It's 37% off, usually 159. If you're looking to upgrade your webcam, the Logitech C920 HD, Pro cam, webcam for sixty nine ninety nine. That's thirty percent off. Normally ninety nine bucks. Dell twenty inch. This is not a necessarily a bad monitor. It's just a small one. It's getting harder to find smaller monitors. But sixty nine ninety nine. Normally one nineteen. Forty percent off. This next keyboard is not on sale, but it's is worth mentioning. Uh, the Logitech K four eighty wireless Bluetooth multi-device keyboard. Now, the reason this is so unusual is it's a Bluetooth keyboard and it's got a small dial switch that you can switch between three devices. So if you're sitting at your desk and you've got a tablet, a phone, and a PC, you can use the same keyboard just by turning that knob and switching between the three devices. And it's got a an actual slot to stick your phone and your tablet in on the back of the keyboard to act a stand. So very... Uh, very useful, and I've had several people tell me that they love this thing. They take it with them when they travel, especially uh, uh, handy um, when you're traveling. So 49 bucks. Uh, here's an older Netgear 
access a rifle a router access point but the price is what makes it so compelling it's still it's not a slouch it's an ac1200 dual band wi-fi router older model still new still new uh 49 40 bucks it's uh 55 off uh but what it does have is it has the usb port so you can actually put network attack storage if you have a usb uh hard drive or a flash drive, you can plug it into this and share it on the network. I do that for one of my backup drives. I have it plugged into a, a router, a wireless router that's got the USB ports in it. So this is a this is a heck of a deal. Yeah, it's not the latest thing, but um, sometimes it isn't a good idea to go with the very latest stuff. Did something break? No. Oh, okay, because it switched back to me suddenly. I guess she was scrolling. Um, uh, Lex, Lexar, 128 gig uh, USB 3.0 hard drive for 24.99. That's 37% off, usually 40 bucks. Here's my favorite good old brother workhorse laser printer. Uh, this is the price to pay for it. It's about as low as it'll get. This is the 2700DW duplex wireless uh, mono all-in-one laser printer, fax, copier. Um, Amnon, did I tell you about how, I, I think I did tell you this past week how after pushing mine for two years. Oh, no, it's more than that. It's more than that. But I've been running on the starter cartridge on mine since it was new. And it's got to be five years ago that I bought this thing. It finally, finally, finally stopped threatening me and said, end of life on, on toner cartridge. <laughs> so I had to change it. It's been warning me for three years to change it. Oh. So... Uh, and it still was the the prints were still good. I just just, just I couldn't get around it anymore. I had to swap it. Yeah, a so, lot a lot of people. I mean, they, they, if you if you have a, a laser printer, and it starts messing up, so to speak, if you take out that's an old trick. If you take out the the cartridge, and you either you you rock it back and forth or shake it sideways, kind of, and put it back. Chances are it'll keep on going and keep on going and keep on going. It distributes the toner. Yeah. Yeah, that's the trick. Yeah. And I, I did that a few times, but I didn't need to because it just never had a, pr a print quality issue. Yeah. So I'm going to look at um, – I'm going to save the cartridge because if I ever order a refilled one, I can send that back as a core mm -hmm. if they require it. So well, 129 that's 35% off the regular price. Here's a new product that I have never seen this before. Uh, Seagate Desktop Plus 4 terabyte uh, hard drive, $119.99. But what's unique about this, it's uh, only $10 off, but it's got two USB ports on the front of the drive. So if you want to connect to it directly, you can plug right into it. So if you, can, you want to plug in a phone, you want to plug in another device, just quickly to, to download to this, you don't have to, you just plug into the front. Plus, it charges your device. So if you say you want to run a backup to your, from your phone to the hard drive, mm -hmm. you plug in your phone, you can let it charge overnight. Interesting, interesting little side feature there that uh, uh, is a differentiator for them. And finally, the price on this is the Edimax N300 Ultra Mini Wi-Fi Extender. I don't know how this works, but geez, for 10 bucks, I think you could try it. I'm not a real big fan of, of wireless extenders, but if you live in an area where you're not completely surrounded by hundreds of Wi-Fi networks, say you want to extend it out to a patio or garage or whatever, uh, this is worth giving it a shot. It's normally uh, $25, but it's only $9.99. That is at Staples. Moving on to Best Buy. Uh, Linksys has come out with a consumer, prosumer version of... Uh, the wireless mesh product. There's lots of people out there that have this now. The prices, thank God, are starting to come down. They're still high. But wireless mesh used to be a, really only a commercial product. And what that does is you have a single point of connection to the wired network, and then you put these access points around your site, and they build a mesh, and they optimize the frequencies and so on. So you can get this. This product claims to have over 600 meg of throughput. And that's over, over uh, bridged wireless, which is amazing. There's several products. Netgear makes one. 
There are a couple other other vendors out there that make it. But um, the advantage to this is that it works very well in a uh, congested environment. And, it, and the, the, tree, the, the key to that is the tri-band network. It has uh, three different frequencies it can use and will optimize on top of. Two gamer products mentioned here. One is the Logitech G502 uh, optical gaming mouse. It's uh, 20 bucks off for 60 bucks. And the Logitech G810 Orion uh, gaming keyboard, backlit keyboard for 129.99 is 30 bucks off. I just purchased a JCreate adapter for a customer this past week where I had to, I was installing one of those little uh, Think Centers, Lenovo Think Centers, the uh, M600, which is a great little desktop workhorse. It's tiny. It's like the size of a, of a, uh, an external DVD or something like that, but a full, a half high slot on a PC that about that size. And it had uh, DisplayPort connections on it and I had to convert it to VGA. So I wound up buying a J5 Create adapter. So I'm mentioning it here because this is one's actually unique. It's a, a USB 3.0 to two HDMIs. So uh, 69 bucks is 10 off. A uh, good product, J5 makes good stuff. Uh, Logitech MK530 uh, advanced wireless keyboard. What makes it advanced? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it reads your mind. But uh, it's a good quality <laughs> keyboard. 15 off at $34.99. Here's an entry-level desktop machine. Now, this is also that uh, Pentium uh, 3700, the, the quad-core Pentium. Four gig of memory, 500 gig hard drive. Great if you just want to set up a a uh, quick and dirty workstation. I actually am running on the Lenovo version of this with that same processor, uh, account, an accounting server that serves up uh, documents quite successfully on a network. 219, it's $50 off. APC Backup UPS 450 VA. This is kind of the smallest you can get now. It's 40 bucks, save 10. Good for your um, cable modem, your uh, DSL modem, whatever, however your services enter your house. If you have a, a telephone TA, uh, this is the one to back that stuff up with. Uh, maybe a backup drive, network backup drive. You want that stuff to, to stay powered on all the time. This is a good solution. Dell 23-inch IPS LED monitor for $109.99, save 70 bucks. Here's the deal of the day on, on, on USB flash drives. This is the... UltraFit tiny 32 gig USB 3.0 drive. You plug it in and leave it in your machine, probably a laptop. It's $9.99, 25 bucks off. Looks like it'll be hard to unplug it. You're not supposed to take it out. Yeah. <laughs> it comes with a special extractor, right? You see the little slot on the bottom yeah. of it there under the, under the logo? Yeah. That's used for It's like you can use your, your nail to pull it out with. But uh, here's the one for you, Amnon. Uh, SanDisk USB 3.0, 256 gig flash drive, 57.99. It's 142 dollars off. I think we should buy two. Yeah, sure. Uh, brother, this is the good old brother entry level USB connected printer, 59.99, 40 off. Does uh, automatic duplex printing. Good old desktop workhorse, but you've got to take into consideration that it is USB and it has to be connected all the time to your PC. And if you want to share it on the network, you have to share it through the PC. It does not have wireless or networking built in. Uh, entry level uh, inkjet printer here, the Canon Pixma MG6821 for 50 bucks, save 100. Well, I shouldn't say it's an entry level printer, it's an entry level price. Yeah, it's not but, a. Uh, it's a pretty good printer. Absolutely. That's all at Best Buy. Uh, Office Depot, Office Max. We've got a Lenovo 10-inch uh, Android tablet, 16 gig of memory for $149.99, say 50. We've got a Lenovo 8-inch, 18 gig, uh, 16 gig uh, Android tablet for 99 bucks, say 50. Come comes oh. with a free back door. Yes, yes, it does. It's, it's better than the free self-igniting ones from Samsung. So, 
that you can use them if you're trapped in the wilderness and you don't know what to do. You just use your Samsung uh, tablet or device to light your fire yeah. for you. No problem. Um, Lenovo desktop AMD A A10 processor uh, computer for four ninety nine ninety nine. That's a hundred bucks off with a monitor. So that's a that's a good deal. Uh, A10, not a new processor, but it is on the high end, short, just short of the FX series processors, but would be a good budget uh, high end desktop. Um, Lenovo 23 inch monitor for $129.99, that's 40 off. We have SanDisk uh, Ultra Plus SDHC micro, S micro SD and, and SD cards for Eighteen ninety nine, save twenty one bucks. Uh, two versions of the uh, Western Digital MyCloud personal cloud storage device. This is a, a Ethernet attached network storage device for the home. It does come with remote access software. The three terabyte version is one fifty nine. The four terabyte version is one seventy nine. They're both twenty dollars off. Here's that same printer again. I had to show it again because it's available at another vendor. From Brother 129. Uh, another J Create uh, display adapter. This time it's the uh, single port display port HDMI for $18.99. The only reason I put up here about these uh, cans of cans of air is that I had to get one for a customer and I just swung by an office store. I won't mention which one. And I wound up paying 10 bucks for one can. This is a deal. Three cans for 10 bucks. That's that's six dollars off. So if you don't have this stuff in the house, just go out and get this and just stick it on the shelf. Have to show ID. Have to show ID to get yeah, because you could, people are. I didn't have to. You would have to. <laughs> but uh, huffing. What are you trying to say, this. Spence? What's that? <laughs> what are you what trying, am I trying to say? I <laughs> said so you look a lot younger than I do. <laughs> well, that's true. I they should you know. Yeah. Um, Thermobake massive notebook chiller this looks like it, just, it lo almost looks like a drone and the fan is so big it might actually lift <laughs> itself off the table if you reverse it so uh, it might be good uh, 19 bucks tiny little uh usb sound adapter so if you're doing say you're doing a remote feed and you only take your laptop with you and you want to have an extra <laughs> audio device for uh so you can have separate channels in and out from from skype or something like that Eight ninety nine for a little micro sound card. Yep. And finally, uh, uh, these are uh, eight gig USB thumb drives from Lexar. <laughs> it's funny. It says in the ad, you order one, uh, you have no choice on color. You're going to get one of these colors. <laughs> you don't know which one. Who cares? Yeah, right. I mean, you want to have different yeah. colors just to separate, you know, to keep them separate. But you have no color choice. They're uh, Three ninety nine normally, eleven ninety nine eight bucks off. That's at uh, Office Depot, Office Max. And finally, we get to uh, Newegg, and we've got uh, a TrendNet. They do have two versions of this. They have the one that's designated as a baby cam, and then they have the one that's just a standard one. So you don't, if you don't want to have the one with the little blue ears on it to make it look like a bear or something like that. Don't they have one with the get, pink ears? Does it have one with what? Pink ears, you know, this is for boys. Oh, There's one. <laughs> I would think yes. <laughs> but for $34.99, you can get this is a this is one of these uh uh short-term deals. It's good for another, well, I'd say uh, this morning it was 18 hours, so probably about 16 hours now. What I what I liked about it was that um it has two-way audio. And it comes with five <laughs> pre-installed soothing songs. <laughs> Motion, sound, and temperature detection. So if you're if the room gets too hot or too cold, that's really cool for thirty four ninety nine. Got an SD card slot for um, recording video. So uh, we've got the Ubiquity uh, wireless mesh product. Now this is five mesh access points. Uses AC MIMO multiple in multiple out antenna technology. Is gigabit connected to the Ethernet. Supports. Um, uh, power over Ethernet. So for five sixty nine, this eh, you know it's it's pricey. But if you if you have a a big building to support, 
if you have a small business that you you want to uh, support really good wireless coverage and don't want to have to rewire add connections to put access points out there, this might be worth the investment in the long run cheaper than pulling cable and putting in standalone access points. And it gives you the, the advantage of this is it gives you a single network ID and automatic handoff between the access points. So you don't have to change or worry about switching, switching SSIDs as you move around the building. 569, it's 53 bucks off. And finally, this is just one of many available products out there. Combo power strips and USB chargers. Now, this is not the one I just bought. I just, I tried, I, I can mention the one I just bought, but this is just happens to be a really good price for $11.99. Um, the one I bought was called Jolly Joy, J-O-L-Y-J-O-Y. -O -Y -O -Y, and it's available on Amazon. I think I paid just under 20 bucks for it. It came with six USB ports and six um, AC ports. And I had a power strip next to my bed where I plug in chargers or other devices. And I actually put a combo USB AC outlet in the wall next to my bed, but I had cables everywhere. So I bought this, uh, a product like this, and now I installed it. So now the wire, the cables come up in a much more, much neater fashion. I don't have cables all over the floor. I don't have to unplug one to use another because I've got six USB plugs. This is, this is a great idea. I mean, I, I like the idea of the wall, replacing the wall outlet for certain circumstances, like in a kitchen where you want to have charging going on. Mm -hmm. But this is a great, this can be like the charge, not this one in particular, but the charge center for the house for everybody's devices to charge. It's, um, I would look into one of these. Amazon has a whole variety of them out there. I'll I was, uh, I, I'm glad you brought that up because I was just looking. You have you, you've used something like this? Because I was just going to buy one of these for my. I, uh, I bought the, uh, the Amazon is called Jolly Joy, J O L Y, okay. J O Y. And that's the one I just got. And I, it, the quality, I love it. I mean, I forget what I paid for it, it was under 20 bucks. And uh, we'll, we, can, we can try to find it. But the um... yeah, it's nice. This even for a <clears throat> like a, a headboard, I think this is this is great. You put some screws in the headboard or some strong double stick tape, and then you can plug in your laptop and also you know plug in your phone and iPad and all that other stuff. Here it is. I I don't think I paid this for it because I might have gotten a different price. It's twenty two ninety nine now, but it's a Jolly Joy six outlet six USB power strip. If you could throw that in. Uh, uh, Skype that be or in the uh, chat that'd be great. Yeah, I'll do that. Thank you. And the um, oh, I guess it's, well, there's a two versions. There's a four four by four or the six by six. I bought the six by six. Gotcha. And of the six USB ports, uh, the first four are one amp, and the second, the last two are two point four amp. So they're good for phones and tablets. And you've got the six surge protected uh, AC outlets on it, and it's. The, the quality, the look and feel, it doesn't feel cheap, which is nice. Cool. So I'll put that link up there. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I was, you know, you were talking about all the wires coming up. Wires everywhere. Yesterday, Kathy was sitting watching uh, Hack My Life on true TV and it's like different tips and stuff. And, and one thing that I looked at, and I said, yo, wow. Um, what do you do with the, uh, roll, the center roll of the, uh, of toilet paper, the, the, the what do you call it? You know what I'm talking about? The, the, the thing that's left the over the cardboard, oh, the old, the, the tube, the, the uh, tube. Yeah. The tube. Yeah, I know where you're going with this. And, and they, they were showing like a power strip with wires, you know, and they just come in. You do, you put the wires through it, and you leave it there, and suddenly, everything is clean. Yep. It's it's uh, it's not all over the place. Yeah. So speaking of something like that, I I'd appreciate somebody somebody's help if somebody wants to call in and answer this, or if, if one of you guys knows. So I've got one of those big uh, like 
one of those big staples paper boxes with the lid on it, the one that holds, I don't know, like four or five boxes of or packs of paper in it. Rims, yeah. I just throw all my wires in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's unbelievably unorganized. And I'm wondering, uh, what is the solution for... And some people say, oh, you know, use a, use a toilet paper tube, use this and use that. I mean, I, the, the amount of cables I have, a solution like that is just not not feasible. Are you talking to make... Go wait, ahead, sorry. wait, are you talking about putting spare cables there or that's where you put the cables that you're right using? Right now, I just have a, like a big box that I just throw cables into. And, and oh, when I need yeah, okay, I no, that's things. different. It's yeah. just a freaking okay. mess. If you have wall space, you can build yourself a pegboard. This is what we used to have in uh, studios and in labs where you'd have okay. uh, just take a, a strip of wood, you drill a hole in at a slight angle, and you slide a little wooden peg in there and just hang the cables up, and you can categorize them. Uh, that way you know where they are when you need it. Um, mm-hmm. Or even even a, uh, a regular commercial pegboard, you can buy longer ones, longer uh, pins to stick out. Um, uh, but Nick, as far as organizing, I, I have the same bin. I probably have more than one bin of the same quality where it's filled with cables. It sucks, man, because it's like yeah, I know. It, it's like I needed. I was looking for some RCA cables this week, and it was like it was like it took me like fifteen minutes to untangle an RCA cable. But yeah. there's no good way, yeah, to to keep these uh, things. Now, I've have... I've got an idea for you too. If you don't want to get into the pegboard and all that, yeah, go to your local ABC store. What's an ABC store? The the liquor store. liquor store. Okay. Oh, I know what you're talking about. The and the compartment, compartmentalized yeah, boxes. Yeah, and and get and ask them to give you one that that goes with a fat bottle. Not just, yeah. and then you can just put it there, and you may need to use two or three of them for the yeah, same so type of cable, like, which is fine. Yeah. Yeah. But then, uh, probably something on the walls probably would make the most sense. I don't know. Okay, just, yeah, you can do that, but I know you you don't like to do that. No, I don't. It's that's not true at all. It's just you know okay. I don't have room for five bo- five champagne boxes to. Be Nick, I, well, the, amp, the idea the I, the Amnon's idea is nice, but I just thought of a way you could if you, what you do is you coil up that that cable, yeah, and you put it in that slot, but you leave the end sticking out. And you cut a little slot on the cardboard so it hangs out the end, so you know that <laughs> slot has that cable in it. Yeah, but he's yeah. talking about the space for the for more than one box. Oh, I understand. Stack. But you could yeah. have yeah. if they're all the same length type of cable, yeah. and you have them in that one slot, and you know that you got three of them in there. Yeah, the, this hmm. way you know oh, what's in that slot. Well, always, always, oh. uh, always, always looking for that, that. That seems to be the biggest problem. It's like you don't want, you know, you don't want to throw a power supply cable away. You don't want to throw an old laptop mm-hmm. power supply away. Yeah. And then, or you, you know, I'm watching this box overflow. I'm, it's as tall as two boxes on top of it. It's insane. Do you have room for one of those plastic drawer organizers? Like the Rubbermaid, like three drawer things. Yeah, yeah. I had oh, already got one of those full of cables. Yeah, yeah. That's what I have. Oh, Nick, I actually, Nick, come on, do. come on, Nick. You don't need that many cables. Give yourself a break. Come on. No, I, it's it's no, but it's 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 there. There's plenty of cables. I mean, there's. I finally threw away uh, the old scuzzy cables that I had. I had what? boxes with. Yeah. Scuzzy. You probably you probably don't even remember this, Nick. Let's no, see. I, I, Let's I mean, see. I know what a scuzzy cable is, yeah, but, but it was these thick 50-pin D-shell connectors, yeah. and they had all kinds of other types. Of, and I had boxes of these things. So that's for any type of storage. Just what you, any high-capacity storage, the original DVD drive or CD drives were scuzzy. Let's see and what I Steve – I think Steve had something to say. Steve? Yeah, you could do what I do. Is, uh, I've got well, more than one box now, but um, get a carrier bag. And if you've got audio cables, tie the cable in a knot. If it's a pair, tie two in a knot. And that stops them getting so tangled up that they're like unbelievably tangled and put them in a carrier bag. Audio mm-hmm. cables in one, USB cables in another. Tie the cable in a knot, then they don't get tangled around each other so much. Interesting. The tie, yeah, I've never thought about tying them together, yeah. Huh. But if, if you've got There's a USB cable, if you tie it in a knot, then there's less chance of it getting wrapped around another cable. Pick yeah, up some US of those. Uh, recommending rubber bands. Velcro. Oh, no, they make covers, Parish. 
you could buy a roll of Velcro cable organizer straps that they, it comes in a big long roll and you pull off a section of it and it's got a uh a, it's a, it's a, a lot in the, in the that you can use a loop around the cable yeah it's a lot more expensive gotcha. to buy that kind what you can buy do nick, stuff yeah nick go go on uh, on amazon yep. and look for uh velcro plants it's to tie plants to and it's a roll it's a big roll of green like seven bucks yeah. yeah and it's like 30 feet or 30 yards or whatever oh yeah and uh-huh. you just cut it so i i have one of those and i cut the piece and i wrapped around it and that rubber bands will wear out will dry out yeah. and pop and then you have more of a mess rubber bands have, are pain in the ass yeah this this was works great you just and hmm. it lasts forever if you want to do each cable separately which I, I, I well, the thing is you don't have to do each cable separately. You can wrap all the power right. supply cables together. So. You could. Exactly what I'm saying. Now, if you're like me here, I don't wrap them together because I go in and out of that box a lot with the power supply cables. Yeah. Or, but if you have it for emergencies, when you need one and you get into that thing every now and then, then, yeah, put them all together. It's much better. You can also recognize the, ca- the, the bundle right away because there's more than one connector on it that is visible at a time so you know exactly which is this bundle and which is the other bundle what's what yeah. is nice about the the pre-made ones is you can buy them in colors so you could theoretically True. have red for audio yeah you know, green for usb gotcha. and, and so on yeah you Although could. I, i've had the colors kits and then, i just then I you have to remember to them that way. then you have to remember your color code <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. And yeah. uh, Rover says bread ties. Don't forget that. Yeah, I've got a couple of those. <laughs> yeah, no, bread ties. When you bread ties are great. I mean, I use them all the time. Yep, me too. To to mark what this is and what that is. Yep. Absolutely, USS Rover. But yeah, that that roll is the cheapest way to go. Okay. Now, Spencer, you're talking about Seagate Drive. Listen to this. As part of its cost-cutting efforts, Seagate has decided to shut down its hard drive manufacturing plant in Suzhou, China. The factory is one of the company's largest production assets, and its closure will significantly reduce the company's hard drive output. Seagate is meant to lay off 2,200 employees, but it is unclear what it's what it intends to do with the facility which it owns. Um, very interesting. I mean, uh, why don't they bring it here? But no, they're trying to cut, trying to cut uh, costs. So I'm wondering if prices of hard drive will kind of start inching up because of that because of not as many drives out there and they don't say when they're planning to do it but i'm sure it could do something steve you're going to say something no it was the dog sorry oh and uh talking about tweeting and all that Deutsche Bank has banned text messages and communication apps such as WhatsApp on company-issued phones in an effort to improve compliance standards. It says the functionality will be switched off this. It will be switched off this quarter, and their uh, chief regulatory officer and chief operating officer. Op- officer told staff in a memo unlike email text messages can't be archived by the bank that's what one of them said that that this is the reason they doing it is because they cannot archive it like email we fully understand the deactivation will change your day-to-day work and we regret any inconvenience 
this may cause. And uh, however, this step is necessary to ensure Deutsche Bank continues to comply with regulatory and legal requirements. The policy also applies to private phones used by employees for work purposes. Communication apps such as WhatsApp, Google Talk, iMessage are also prohibited. Uh, control. They want control over that stuff. So it's it's uh, it's interesting that they need to change their policy on these things. Nine one nine five one eight nine seven seven three computers two K voice on Skype guys. If you want to call and comment, ask a question, please do. We want to hear you. And AT and T closed down uh, one of their networks, wireless network. They completely turned it off. It's 2G wireless network. Officially shut down on January 1st. So no more 2G. What was the original uh, AT&T data network? It was called, it wasn't, didn't have a G or a number. It was something else. I uh, can't remember what it was. Don't remember. The one that was like 15 kilobits. <laughs> the one that we tried to use while we were at the Kicks studio yeah. to, to stream. Yeah. 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 Since the network is no longer active, it means that the original first generation iPhone, also the, known as the iPhone 2G, will no longer receive cellular service from AT&T's network. So if you have an original iPhone that you're using, too bad. If you still happen to use an iPhone 2G, it may be time to upgrade or list it on eBay. Mark MacRumor reports that few people appear to have been using the original iPhone as there were no complaints from iPhone owners two weeks ago when the network was shuttered. But going forward, customers will keep the device as part of a collection, will only be able to use it on Wi-Fi. I, I kind of doubt anybody's using a, an iPhone from, when is this? It's 90, what? 98? 99? The, the first... Edge, edge, edge Network. Edge Network. That's what it was called, the original Microsoft Edge Network. Um, originally released in June of 2007 and discontinued in 2008, the first iPhone, hmm, not 2007, come on. iPhone was 2007. Oh, I thought it was 90 some. No, it, it was just 10 years ago. Was made obsolete by Apple back in 2013, and it has not received software updates since 2009. OS 3. Later renamed uh, iOS 3. According to ATT, shutting down the 2G network frees up available spectrum for future network technologies, including 5G. ATT says the spectrum will be repurposed for LTE. So they need more bandwidth. They don't have frequencies. There you go. Repurpose. Why didn't they do it 5G? Ten years ago. Why? <laughs> I mean, you well, know. Because it, it wasn't invented yet. <laughs> <laughs> and the G, the G part of it is misleading. We know. We talked about this years uh, ago about how yep. 3G and 4G doesn't mean four times. Right. Uh, G was supposed to be gigabit at one point. Yep. Or, or No, it wasn't supposed to be gigabit, but the generation. It was there, supposed At one point, at I think it was 4G is supposed to be one gig, theoretical. But that's theoretical in the lab. doesn't mean you get that ever close to that. All right. But they tout it as 4G, like, wow. <clears throat> um, hey, Mike, Steve? Yeah. Prices, prices of yep. uh, iPhones are going to, or old Apple stuff is going to go up. Yeah, I read that. Look at all the of the uh oh all all apple stuff or old apple stuff what was it? old no apple everything 
Oh, let's Mike, see. Who... Your audio has gone crap. Let's oh, see. Who... Got... That's that's the thing they do when revenues are down. You raise prices, but what does that do? It's not. It a, no, no. It's for it's, it's because of Brexit. Hello. It's because the price, so they the price say. of the pounds not worth much. Let's let's see who's who's online. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yep. I can't hear you too good. Um, you can't hear us too good. Yeah, you want to you want to you want a Q-tip? <laughs> Go ahead. I can't hear you, Abner. You're kidding. I don't know. I mean, that that's. I can't turn it any higher. Amnon, are you sure you're actually sending him audio? Yeah. It's pro you're probably not. Well, I mean, look in Skype. He's, he can't hear you. <laughs> it's okay. Voice is up. I mean, I can I can see the, the yeah, meter. Look inside your Skype settings, and do you see audio going to him? Oh, 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 oh. Wait a second. Did, I, did we change something here? Oh, shoot. Uh, Gene, go ahead and call back. He can't hear you. Yeah, up. Well, no, he hears. He's he's out. Gene, hold on. Okay, I can hardly hear you. Yeah, hold it, but you do hear me. So let let me just make sure. No, it's right. Yeah. Um. Anyway, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to go back to what uh, Nick was uh, asking about. What I did, uh, which I found to be very, very useful, is, and I don't know if they have them up in Albany, but I went to the container store here in Raleigh. Yeah. And this store has variable, all kinds of containers, plastic, and I mean, for almost any use that you can think of. And I found a container in there that had drawers in it that you could stack one up on top of the other if you wanted. But each one had, had separate drawers that you just pull out. And, I, I, and what it's actually for is kids in kids' rooms to put all their toys in. And there's ways to label them. So you could, like, label cars and that kind of stuff. So I bought one of those. And I put my cables, all my cables in there and my mice and uh, all kinds of extra stuff that I have. And I label them all up and I just stack them right up. So they only take up a small amount of room and you can stack them as high as you want. Okay, okay. cool. I'll have to check that out. They also make it. You get good that? At, um, yeah, yeah, Lowe's we got it. And, okay. All right, Lowe's Gene. And Home thanks. Home Depot have uh, okay. portable. Take care. Talk to thanks, you. Thanks, Gene. I can. Lowe's and Home Depot have. I know the places too have portable, uh, reconfigurable uh, storage boxes that you can carry with you. I have some for different parts that I take on the job, and, they, and you can different size bins. You can reconfigure the bins to be different sizes. And uh, they're well made. They're not cheesy. They've got handles on them, so you can stack them up, stand them up, put them in the closet. Hmm. Hey, did anybody just just as a uh, a fan of the uh, of space exploration? If you haven't seen it yet, check out the video of this of the Falcon nine land the, the latest landing where they landed the falcon 9 spacex landed their rocket on the uh, ocean drone platform um, they haven't had too many successes lately but this this was real good it worked out well it's always so cool to see a rocket land w using its engine like we used to s yeah. think of space back in the day where we'd see ships come down and land it's it. They were saying that uh, they, uh, they 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 went back to landing and they nailed it. They did. Yeah. Dead center on the little uh, uh, the little circle there in the middle yeah. of the barge. It's uh. We're getting there. Yep. But the good part about it is, well, I should. I we are subsidizing these industries. I know that we're giving them money, government money, uh, taxpayer money. But the fact is that having competition and other companies doing research and all that, we're not depending just on our own internal research is a good thing. Huh? So, so they have a... Go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. No, no. I was going to say they have a graphic. If you go to do a search on... For YouTube video, it's a SpaceX 
lands rocket at sea makes history. I think this is from a while ago. It's not the latest one. It's from April. But it shows a graphic of the of how the booster is recovered. And it's really cool. Cool. Um, Steve, Mike, anything uh, from the other side of the pond that you want to bring up? No, it's still... Is my audio okay now? Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. No, it's just... Uh, if it wasn't Trump, it's Brexit. That's all we get over here. Now. It's very, very quiet. Apart, apart from Trump, like, uh, you know, rejuvenating the world's interest in something, mm. um, there's been nothing of interest. It's really boring. What was, what was the reaction from the UK of uh, Winston Churchill's uh, bust being returned to the Oval Office? It was in the press. Yeah. Everybody was talking about it. So. Yeah. Oh, yes. Interesting little thing, but still. It's very, very quiet. <laughs> Be very, very careful. I'm, right. hunting, wa I'm hunting wabbits. Be very, very quiet. <laughs> Are we losing it? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the story about Apple suing Qualcomm for one billion dollars? One billion bucks. Yeah, yeah. Tell, tell us. For, so uh, apparently, because Qualcomm is the provider of chipsets for mobile phone technology and has owned owned those patents, says that uh, Apple sues Qualcomm for one billion in unpaid rebates, alleges attempted perjury and extortion. Think about that. These were business partners. Mm -hmm. This is like the next step will be accusing them of murder. I mean, this is, this is pretty serious. They come out like this to say this stuff. My goodness. Is there a we career? scratched your Recently back, fine. but you didn't scratch ours back. Yeah. Is it a recently uh, Korean FTC, I guess it's their um, Federal Trade Commission, fined Qualcomm $850 million for practices. So... That's pretty amazing. That's that's well, that's chump change for these companies, though. You think about it. That's uh, their discretionary fund. Not a big deal. When they started that practice, they said, "Okay, let's put a billion on the side, because we know we're going to get sued." Hmm. Yep. Oh well. All right. Well. Anything else? Nick, you got a you got a new show uploaded already? Yeah, if you're interested in that, um, we could hear about the inauguration, hear about the Women's March, and all that fun stuff. ATNShow.com. That's ATNShow.com. Yep, it's up right now. Check it out. All right. So that that will uh, that will end our show today. I want to thank everybody. Steve, Jorvik, Spence, Nick, everybody thank in you. the chat. Thank you very much. And good morning, Kathy, Hannah, Nabil, Mac, Norm, Katie, and Donna. Thank you, everybody, for tuning to Computers 2K Now. We hope you enjoyed and maybe learned something from our time together. Remember to practice safe computing. Back up your hard drive. Update your virus scanner. We'll be back here next Sunday at 9. But you can always reach us at computers2know.com. Remember to follow us on YouTube and like us on Facebook. At noon today, it's the Gisela Show. And tomorrow, it is the Breaking Free show. And the new show that we're doing, I don't know how many people here would want to hear about that, but it's about yoga. You call this yoga, and that's Tuesday morning at 10. Talk to you, everybody.
You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section on nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Atomos.com, makers of quality video recorders and converters, CarolinaApparel.com, and DeltaForce.net.